Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So then we have to see that whether this uh, this gradient transport assumption still holds or not. And for that we will introduce a very simplified uh, reaction scheme where uh, we will not consider all this uh, linear this uh, this um, uh, exponential form etc. We will just and we will even uh, neglect essentially the exponential form and just say that the uh, of, of our dependence on temperature we will just consider a very simplified uh, reaction where this uh, um, this thing is uh, shown by is given by um, I or the reaction the production and consumption rate of the species I is given by minus rho times B times psi I. Okay. So, this linear reaction scheme where we have just totally ignored the exponential part. We will see that what how we can show that this is done does not hold. And uh, then of course, if you go back to the, uh, the T i that is the scalar time scale. Um, which is xi i double prime square averaged by the scalar dissipation rate. Okay, and if we now set this production equal to dissipation equal to this covariance of uh, velocity fluctuation and scalar fluctuations, we get of course, we get that one. plus some additional contributions due to the due to the since your chemical time scale now becomes important okay so here we have assumed basically the assumption is that balance of production dissipation and reaction terms in the transport or evolution equation of okay so then this gives you get the dt but you get additional contributions from this Okay. So, and actually in this case you will see that your T by tau i with B tilde varies like this. Okay. So, B is essentially the comes from this your reaction term okay. and this is 2.0. So, and this is B tilde B tilde equal to 0. So, I will see that uh, that when does the gradient transport assumption hold? The gradient transport assumption will hold when this is equal to 0 and this is equal to 1 okay? or rather uh, this is equal to uh, equal to 2 uh, this thing. Okay? So, uh, so, this will hold only then, but you see that uh, the problem is that when B tilde becomes large, uh, this thing becomes very, very small. Okay? So, then when these two are small okay, that is uh, when uh, these two are very small then this uh, uh, this uh, equation when this when this is small then this becomes big and when this becomes small then this becomes big. So, uh, these two becoming simultaneously becoming equal to 1 this case does not really happen. So, as a result of this the gradient transport assumption um, fails in most cases uh, when you try to uh, apply this for the um, reactive scalar. Okay. So, basically and you see that as what happens is that as B tilde increases this T by tau i becomes goes to goes to 0. Okay. 
so as as this goes to zero of course uh, but then this uh, uh, then this goes to become small and this uh, the smaller the quantity the far and more far and far is being deviated this assumption is be, be gets deviated from the basic gradient transport assumption and physically this results from the change of the scalar fluctuations that is brought about by the chemical reactions so chemical reactions actually what it does is that chemical reactions consume the scalar okay so when they consume the scalar the flex the local scalar fluctuation reduces because the scalar can go to the value can go to zero or it can reduce okay it can be produced as well but it can go to it can it can change from the actual uh, scalar value that was in place so that chemical reaction introduces a uh, scalar fluctuations and as a result of that this uh, mm, uh, this gradient transport uh, this uh, ch the, there is a result of uh, the scalar fluctuations are not independent of the reactions the reactions contribute to the scalar fluctuations they can reduce it and as a result of that the gradient transport assumption for non reactive scalars mm, uh, may not hold for the uh, the reactive scalars so this was the uh, uh, this was the uh, um, so here of course this will be um, uh, this will be Fabry average so this was the thing so gradient transport assumption is a problematic thing for a uh, for a um, uh, for combustion and you will see that sometimes it's uh, we in combustion we assume that gradient uh, 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 transport or counter gradient transport as the situation may be okay so next uh, what we'll do is that next we'll go into uh, some uh, uh, some practical modeling approaches that is um, used uh, for uh, for uh, turbulent combustion and that uh, one uh, uh, one uses to solve uh, uh, large uh, uh, situations uh, as it using using the, so these approaches are typically implemented in commercial codes like fluent uh, etc ansys fluent so uh, we'll just go over this to see that how by introducing simple assumptions uh, we can have a reasonably okay rather crude uh, uh, closure for the um, uh, for the source uh, for the mean source terms so that we will uh, proceed um, uh, in the in the following okay so uh, for that uh, uh, so to that closure of course we'll go into better closures we'll go into more refined models like the the uh, the transported pdf model and the and the conditional moment closure models um, the g equation model and the flame net models in the later non premix flaming and premix flame classes so but to give you just a fl flavor of how uh, uh, the commercial codes work and how this modeling for the mean source term is done we'll go look into this uh, class of like the ad break up and ad dissipation models Okay. Now these are from Spalding. Spalding introduced the eddy breakup model in 1971, and this has a very solid. I mean, unlike the eddy dissipation models, uh, this has a very solid uh, um, uh, 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 physical uh, reasoning. Okay. So he said that that uh, the turbulent mixing uh, can be viewed as a cascade process, and uh, th this mixing process is essentially is basically the most important factor that dri that drives that drives the reactions. We can assume that the reactions are so fast that the whole process of turbulent combustion to be essentially mixing controlled. So essentially, the reaction rate in turbulent combustion then we don't have to consider the individual reaction rates. Whether whether the in turbulent combustion the average reaction rate will be essentially essentially governed by the average mixing rate okay so that is the idea so he says that the turbulent that is the ad breakup model says that the turbulent mean reaction rate is governed by the mixing as mixing is the rate determining process okay that is the mixing time scales are much larger than the reaction time scales which can be considered as a result in instantaneously or rather infinitely fast the reactions and essentially the whole process is governed by turbulent mixing so the average reaction rate is essentially the mixing rate so the turbulent mean reaction rate of products is given by is equal to rho times a CEBU which is a constant times 
epsilon by k times y p to the power of half. Okay. You see this thing uh, rather if you if you go back what was the definition of our scalar dissipation rate? What was the modeling for our scalar dissipation rate? So, this was the modeling for our scalar dissipation rate right. As you see here this thing is looks very close to that. Okay. So, essentially the scalar dissipation rate has a, has a unit of 1 per second and uh, here this is also when you uh, this does not have any unit. So, essentially when it is epsilon by k okay, this uh, essentially gives you a time scale because you see epsilon is a, has a time uh, as a units of meter square per, per second cube and k has a uh, unit of meter square per second. So, epsilon k by k itself as a unit of 1 per second. Okay. So, this gives you a time scale itself and so they say Spalding is saying that this uh, epsilon by k times y p fluctuation that is the variance of y product fluctuation um, variance of, um, of the of the of the of y p prime is essentially uh, this essentially gives you a, a mixing time times this uh, dissipation rate by turbulent kinetic energy by turbulent kinetic energy is essentially gives you a mixing um, time scale and uh, inverse of a mixing time scale and that is essentially proportional to the mean uh, uh, formation of the mean uh, uh, is, is equal to the mean reaction rate of the mean uh, consumption or mean production rate of the products. Okay. So, that is what he is saying. And uh, of course, y p double prime this one is the um, is the variance of y p double prime of of, of essentially a variance of y p whereas, y p is given by mean y p plus y p double prime. So, this is not far very average. Okay. So, uh, you see the what I am saying is that this epsilon by k times y p double prime square okay, uh, uh, this um, this whole thing is essentially kind of uh, though this this thing has a scalar dissipation rate as it's essentially the scalar dissipation rate of the products and that is essentially proportional to one by time. Um, but this is slightly different also because scalar dissipation it has a square here which is not here. Okay, so this is what the eddy breakup model is. Okay, it says that the essentially this uh, the mean reaction or the mean uh, production rate is essentially equal to the mean mixing of the mean mixing rate, and that is um, um, essentially inverse of the mean mixing time scale. Okay, so that it is. Now um, uh, there is another model called the eddy dissipation model. Okay, and this was done by Magnussen, uh, and uh, he replaced this y p double prime. They replaced this y p double prime whole square half with the mean mass fraction. Okay, uh, that is uh, in the mean y p. And they defined this thing say if they consider so that uh, um, if they consider a reaction like a, a single step reaction plus y o uh, going to y p uh, double prime p. So, then this mean of uh, the, the, the for mean consumption rate of the fuel is essentially equal to mean rho times A is a modeling constant times y f times epsilon by k and this mean uh, consumption rate of O2 is essentially equal to mean the density times A times mean y O2 by nu times epsilon by k and mean W p is essentially equal to mean density times A times B by 1 plus nu another modeling constant and y p times epsilon by k. Okay. So, this is the eddy dissipation model which actually now uh, though it does not have much uh, physical uh, uh, meaning uh, it actually inclu includes this uh, reactions through this uh, um, uh, through this um, one step uh, reaction mechanism. Okay. So, uh, this is the eddy breakup and the um, eddy dissipation models and then there is one model uh, which is the eddy uh, uh, dissipation concept. Uh, now, before that uh, we can also use the detailed finite rate chemistry um, and uh, write that as of this, this reactions as a function of temperature mean temperature. So, then of course, it does not introduce any models, but then the problem is that then you, um, uh, then you basically miss out the contribution that can come from the 
the fluctuations of temperature okay so then that and, and as well as the scalar fluctuation so that is the uh, the the downside so the ed dissipation concept is essentially the ed dissipation concept is essentially uh, this extension of the edm and it uh, contains the uh, the detailed uh, um, uh, reaction uh, it can account for the detailed reaction kinetics though this is also crude and uh, does not always have very solid um, uh, um, uh, 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 physical arguments. So, the assumption is that that reactions happen in fine scales okay, uh, which is true to some extent. Uh, reactions happen on small scales and the uh, small scale is essentially this we represent, we represent by star which is a fine scale and the reaction volume the reaction length scale is given by zeta star and this is a constant it is given by this new kinematic viscosity times the Favre average dissipation rate divided by the uh, Favre average turbulent kinetic energy uh, squared to the power of one fourth for dimensionality and the uh, this is the volume of the scales is given by of course this cube okay and the reaction rates of course are given by uh, determined by the Arrhenius reactions Arrhenius expressions. And the time scales that is up to how much time the reaction will proceed is given by tau star is equal to C tau which is a model constant nu by to the power of half ok. So, this is the time scale for the reaction ok and of course, uh, for to find out the, the boundary condition or the initial conditions for the reactions on small scales. The assumption is that pressure is equal to constant and T and Y i is of course, defined in a given cell in a computational cell that is our initial T and Y i and the re reaction time that is the how much time we will integrate up to these reactions this is given by tau star and the integration is performed by um, some uh, routines uh, with ISAT because this can lead to very stiff differential equations. And the model for the source term which is the most important thing that goes into the governing equations is given by this SI tilde squared time scale minus times y i tilde minus y tilde ok. So, it is a mass fraction. So, this guy is essentially the mass fraction on small scales of species i after reaction time tau y star ok. So, by this model we can essentially uh, go into uh, uh, to we can put this inside uh, the, uh, the our source term for this uh, governing equation for the reactive scalars whereas, this thing can be always obtained by integration of the Arrhenius uh, reaction rate 
uh, Arrhenius type reaction rate constants etc and uh, uh, and uh, by those detailed things and uh, we can integrate essentially up to tau star mm, uh, as you said. Uh, so, by this we can include the detailed chemistry into the into this uh, this uh, uh, this um, uh, source term in the, in the models. But of course, the physical uh, reasoning is not very uh, robust and uh, this is still a, is a still a crude and first order model and uh, later in later classes we will see that um, how uh, we can revise those models and what different techniques can be used for modeling turbulent combustion. So, in this class we have essentially have started uh, looking into this um, what we have done is we essentially looked into the density varying flows and introduced a new concept called Favre averaging and then uh, with the Favre averaging we derived the different averaged uh, uh, continuity equation we derived the average momentum equation. We have showed what is the that uh, we can close those uh, momentum equation using those those momentum equation when you do uh, when you introduce Favre variables and you do an averaging you basically encounter unclosed terms in the form of Reynolds stresses. We showed that how Reynolds stresses can be closed with the essentially with the help of eddy viscosities and which introduces this uh, this Favre average turbulent kinetic energy and Favre average uh, uh, kinetic energy dissipation rate and for that we can have a governing equation of turbulent kinetic energy Favre average turbulent kinetic energy and we can have a governing equation for turbulent dissipation rate. The turbulent kinetic energy governing equation can be obtained rigorously the dissipation rate equation is, is basically a, um, kind of ad hoc but with that we can model simple flows like uh, jet flows etc. Okay. Next we considered because we are considering turbulent combustion we considered basically this uh, uh, different kind of reactive scalars where we put uh, that uh, species and temperature into one vector equation and uh, we wrote one general equation and we saw that when we average that uh, this uh, uh, the, the closure uh, problem arises. Mm, uh, so, the closure problems um, uh, similar to the uh, similar to the equation for the for the uh, for momentum the closure problem arises in in species in averaging the species equations also the biggest closure problem is of course the modeling the source terms and here we have shown that the more source terms can be modeled using this eddy breakup uh, 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 the average source term can be and uh, of course before that we showed that the average source term um, uh, for the temperature equation which is the heat release rate equation um, cannot be written just in terms of average temperature because it also includes the uh, the the contribution from uh, temperature fluctuations okay and so that is the biggest problem of uh, this kind of moment methods and then here we show that uh, this uh, weaker uh, this uh, if we just forget about that we can use this eddy breakup and eddy dissipation and eddy uh, dissipation modeling and eddy dissipation concepts to have kind of uh, like ad hoc uh, uh, closure for this um, source terms of course the eddy breakup model is uh, is physically sound in the sense that it says that the reactions are too fast and as a result your your uh, average reaction rate in turbulence is essentially governed by the average mixing rate ok. So, that is the that is the argument uh, uh, whereas of course, one can use a finite rate chemistry also uh, which is used in commercial softwares, but then the you do not introduce any turbulence chemistry interaction and uh, they basically ignore the effect of this temperature fluctuations. So, that is uh, one penalty one has to pay and then we looked into the, the there are other problems also where the turbulent transport term closure also has a problem and uh, we uh, showed that how for uh, non reactive closure non reactive species or non reactive scalars. Uh, we can use a gradient transport assumption for that. That gradient transport assumption is justified, but uh, even for a simple uh, reaction where the reaction rate depends linearly on the species without even considering the, the exponential terms, uh, Arrhenius terms, we sh showed that um, that can lead to a uh, lot of uh, problems um, in, 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 in uh, closures and uh, that does not hold under all circumstances. So, here we have just um, started looking into turbulent combustion, we have looked into basically basic models and basic problems of turbulent combustion the foremost being the closure of the source terms ok the, the uh, which arises due to the Arrhenius once again due to the Arrhenius dependence of the reaction rate. Uh, the reaction rate is uh, Arrhenius dependent on temperature that is uh, reaction rate is e to the power of minus E a by R t. So, that creates a problem and um, uh, that is the biggest uh, one of the biggest challenges in modeling turbulent combustion, but then modeling must be required because in if you have to model uh, engines where turbulent combustion happens in the combustor you cannot use direct numerical simulations where we essentially solve from the large scales to the small scales you have to solve for the average quantities. And when we, we saw that when we uh, try to define uh, derive the governing equation for the average quantities we face different kinds of closure problems and which uh, we try to circumvent in different forms. So, next class we will look into turbulent non premix flames and turbulent premix flames and uh, the modeling approaches for that. So, till then goodbye.